به برنامه نان گلوسا خوش اومدید سلام به همگی من مرم نمازی هم و من فری برز پویا هستم برنامه این هفته موضوعمون حمله تروریستی به تهرانه و واقعا فاجعه که صورت گرفته اونجا و خیلی جاهای دیگه آره و اینکه ما چطوری این, این رو میتونیم توضیح بدیم و چطوری این وسط انسانیت رو به عنوان میار بیان و پاسخ جامعه قرار بدیم ام. مصاحبمون با دیوید ران پرزیدنت آزاد اندیشان آتیست از کاناداست در زم فتوه احمقانمون از عربستان سعودیه و اینکه کسایی که تو قطر هستن الان دیگه روزشون باطل شده تا اینکه مذارت خواهی بخوان از دولت عربستان سعودی دولت عربستان سعودی فتوه احمقانه و لحظه زیبای زندگیمون در رابطه یک کنفرانس واقعا عظیم زیبا در جوی است که قرار آزاداندیشی و انتقاد و روی برگرداندن از مذهب و به عنوان یک اصل حق انسان ازش دفاع کنه واقعا فکر کنم یک کنفرانس مهمیه که امیدوارم بعضی از بینندگان هم بتونن شرکت کنن حتما شرکت بکنن هفته گذشته در تهران دو حمله تروریستی بود که داعش مسئولیتش رو قبول کرده و میدونیم که دوازده نفر کشته شدن و بیش از چل نفر مجروح شدن و واقعا اولین چیزی که به فکر میاد اینه که آدمایی بیگناه اومدن رفتن توی مجلس برای مثال دارن میرن دنبال کار زندگیشون و روز چند ساعت بعد دیگه نیستن کشته شدن و واقعا از صفناکی که آدم فکر میکنه که دیگه تو دنیا یه وضعی هست که خیلی دیگه این امنیت رو ندارن میرن بیرون از خونشون و شب دیگه بر نمیگردن دقیقا و این وضعیتیه که کارهای تروریستی به زندگی مردم داره یواش یواش تحمیل میشه و جواد جلو اینو گرفت باعث و بانی این وضعیت هم جمهوری اسلامیه هم عربستان سعودیه هم قطره و هم دولت آمریکا تمام اینا به اشکال مختلف بخشی از اون زنجری هستند که فرهنگ ترور فرهنگ کشتن مخالف فرهنگ این که یه جامعه کل جامعه دشمن توه مرگ بر آمریکا، مرگ بر اسرائیل، مرگ بر بریتانیا تمام و زن بی هجاب نمیدونم، بهایی، اقلیت مذهبی، آتیز هر کس که مخالف تو هست در واقع تارگت و هدف عملات تروریستی شما میتونه باشه چیزی که مهمه اینجاست اینه که نباید طرف یه قطب تروریسم علیه اون قطب دیگر رو گرفت یعنی بعضی میان طرف عربستان سعودی رو میگیرن بعضی میان طرف مثلا جمهوری اسلامی رو میگیرن هر دوتاشون قطبی هستن در, علی... در ترو... پیش برد تروریسم تو جنیا کار انسانیت این باید باشه که از خود انسانیت دفاع کنه در مقابل همه این قطبا که خودش یه بخشش هم خود دولت آمریکاست داعش اینا همه دست به دست دارن زندگی مردم رو توی تمام نقاط دنیا دارن سیاه میکنن واقعا دقیقا شما اگه توجه میکنین همین اتفاقی رو که تو تهران افتاد هر روزه در سوریه داره اتفاق میفته که یه بخشش جمهوری اسلامیه یه بخشش عربستان سعودیه یه بخشش قطره یه بخشش آمریکاست یه بخشش همین به شکل روزانه در زندگی مردم تو سطح وسیعتر از این توی زندگی مردم سوریه مردم عراق داره اتفاق میفته و اهمیت داره که این رو به عنوان یک لحظه نگاه کنیم و ببینیم چه زجی مردم سوریه و مردم عراق دارن از دست جرات تروریستی که به اشکال مختلف پشتیبانی شدن و اهمیت داره که ما بگیم که تروریسم کاملا محکومه تروریسم در تهران محکومه همونطور تروریسم در بغداد در, در لندن در, لندن، در, در همه جای دنیا هر جامعه همه جای دنیا پاکستان. محکومه و اینو به رسمیت بشناسیم که نمیشه طرف هیچ کدوم از اینا رو گرفت شما نگاه کنین نماینده مجلس در آمریکا 
توی صحبتی که داره میکنه با در یکی از جلسات صحبت میکنه خب اشکال نداره اجازه بدین که چیز خوبی هم چیز خوبی چیز بدی هم نیست که مثلا این جنت تروریستی اون جنت تروریستی رو بکشه داعش مثلا بیاد جمع. توی تهران مثلا بمب بذاره خب اینا این همو ضعیف میکنی حرفا نشون میده چقدر سیاست خارجی آمریکا و بخشی از نمایندگان توی آمریکا تنها وسیله پیش برد سیاست خارجیشون در واقع باز کردن زنجیر ترور بر علیه مردم منطقه است براش مهم نیست که این وسط کسی که نشسته توی اتاق انتظار تو مجلس تهران آدمی که اومده کار کارش رو زندگی پوش کنه آدمی در واقع آدم معمولیه یا کسی که داره توی بغداد توی مغازه‌اش داره رام بر روی خرید روزانه چه داره میکنه یکی سری شنبه شب رفته توی جنوب لندن نزدیک لندن بریج داره رفته پاپ داره دیگه یه بخش هم اینه که میدونین تروریست‌ها دلیلی که میتونن به این وحشیانه حمله کنن به بچه و توی مدرسه و دیسکوتک و کنسرت اینه که اون کسایی که دشمن خودشون میدونن انسانیتشون از دست دادن از نظر این یعنی آدم نیستن انسان نیستن و به همین خاطر هر جا اتفاق تروریستی میفته ما باید انسانیت اونایی که کشته شدن حرمتشون رو حفظ کنیم به خاطر اینکه این یک راه مقابله با تروریسم به خاطر اینکه اون ضد انسانیت هر کسی که مثل خودش نیسته و ما باید دفاع کنیم از هر کسی که هم مثل خودمونه هم مثل خودمون نیست دقیقا و این به نظر من جوهر اینه که این وسط باید انسانیت رو نجاد داد تنها صد مقابل این فرهنگ ترور که دو دنیا تن به نظر میاد که تنها وسیله پیش برده سیاست های دولت های مرتج است اینه که اون تصویر انسانیت رو دقیقا. جلوی این بذاریم و میشه تروریسم رو به همین شکل با تمام امکاناتش به شکستی شد It's a pleasure to be here. I wanted to speak to you first, I guess, on this motion of, for Islamophobia, condemning Islamophobia. I think a lot of people were shocked about it. Tell us a bit more about this motion and what it represents. Uh, well, the good news is that it doesn't have force of law. It does not directly threaten free speech now, not yet. That's the good news. The bad news is that it's a uh, major step forward towards um, uh, criminalizing event. Not criminalizing is perhaps too strong a word, but repressing free speech against Islam. It it doesn't repress it now, but it's a step in that direction. And uh, so criticism of Islam is going to get more and more difficult. Also, this is not the first such motion. Uh, there were two previous to it, one in the Quebec National Assembly in 2015, I believe, and it was unanimous, uh, and another in the Canadian Parliament last year, and then this one, uh, which passed, I believe it was only a week ago approximately, in late March, we're now April 2nd, um, and uh, it's basically a victory for radical political Islam because it sends a message that if you criticize Islam somebody might accuse you of Islamophobia and Islamophobia has been condemned by the Canadian Parliament and there may be negative repercussions maybe not immediately if they've done this now then what's to prevent them from passing something stronger with more effect in the future It's basically a step towards a new blasphemy law. Canada already has a blasphemy law, which we're trying to get rid of. It's uh, Article 296, I believe, in the Criminal Code. It hasn't been used in decades. Uh, but if a new one is passed as a, as a future you know, outgrowth of this motion on Islamophobia, it could very well be worse than the existing blasphemy law because It talks about Islam in particular, therefore it gives a privilege to a particular religion which could cause interreligious conflict. And also we can be sure that there'll be uh, lots of fanatical Islamists who are, who are 
who make sure it's enforced, whereas the current blasphemy law is, 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 hasn't been enforced in ages. So it's very troubling. What do you say to people who say, well, this is a way of stopping terrorism, especially with the awful, you know, tragic attack on a mosque recently? Well, it has nothing to do with that attack on the mosque other than the fact that people are using mass murder, uh, they're exploiting that mass murder as an excuse to pass this motion. That, uh, what happened in uh, Quebec City was an attack on people, on Muslims. Uh, to Islamophobia, the word means fear of Islam. It's perfectly reasonable to be afraid of Islam, especially its political, radical, fundamentalist variant. I'm afraid of radical Christianity. I mean, there are radical Christians who murder abortion doctors or pass anti-gay legislation or, you know, the fundamentalists of all religions are, are dangerous. And uh, f furthermore, it, it's not going to uh, make things better, it's going to make things worse because everybody you know, who thinks clearly can see that this is unfair. It's going to make it uh, difficult for people to, to, to express their fears of terrorism, uh, of fears of Islamist terrorism, and, and which is going to uh, make the uh, social climate even worse. You know? and we, I think it's, if, if it does anything, it'll increase the probability of some kind of uh, 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 of acts of violence, acts of hatred, uh, could probably increase as a result of this unfair motion. What about uh, the Canadian blasphemy law? What's when was the last time uh, it was used, and what are the hopes of it being rid of, gotten rid of? Well, um, the last time was. Uh, I, I'm not sure of the date. I think it was in the. It was ha over half a century ago, a long time ago, um, and uh, there was a petition uh, started by a couple of organizations. A petition to um, to abolish this uh, last me law. Our organization supported it. Uh, the, this move, and the federal government under the new prime minister uh, Justin Trudeau gave some indication that it might remove it as it was cleaning up the criminal code in various ways. The last I've heard, although, is that uh, they've decided not to change it, but I'm, I haven't heard anything definite. You talk about multiculturalism as an ideology, and, and in a sense all of that feeds into this Islamophobia motion and all of that. Oh, oh yes, it's all much, uh, very much uh, of a piece. Uh, multiculturalism, what it means literally, is just cultural diversity. That's what it used to mean in the good old days. But now it, it basically means uh, it means cultural relativism. It means that uh, the person's ethno-religious identity is more important than their citizenship. It means that people are labeled by their by the community in which they're born and raised, so that Muslims get the Muslim label stuck on them. That's what multiculturalism means. And this, uh, this empowers fundamentalists of every religion. If, if, if religious identity becomes so important, then that empowers those who are most pious, most fundamentalist. Uh, and so uh, multicultural, multiculturalism plays very much into the hands of the Islamists and it makes it harder for for Muslim dissenters to express themselves and to uh, to escape that identity it makes it harder to to uh, change religion for example or to become an atheist if a, if a Muslim wants to, to leave Islam I mean it's already difficult enough especially in Islam where where apostasy is uh, is considered to be a horrible sin and in many countries a crime now I mean, it's not a crime in Canada, but uh, you know, if, if, if the label is stuck on people, it's harder for them to get rid of it. And Canada has a multiculturalism act, so I, I call it an ideology because it's 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 in law, it's a mentality uh, which uh, essentializes religion, and religion is not essential. Religion is or should be a choice. You can change religion. You can't change your race. Uh, you can't. Uh, you can't change your sexual orientation very easily. Uh, 
you know you can't change your age except to grow older uh, so but you can change your religion so religion is not an essential trait and so it shouldn't be essentialized by by identifying people by that label all the time so, you know you talk about the sort of persecution of atheists uh, yes. you spoke about it at the uh, conference in Poland uh, do you think this sort of multiculturalism and Islamophobia feed into a situation where it's easier to persecute atheists? Well, indirectly, yes. It, it doesn't have a... Well, I would say the effect would be direct within religious communities. It makes it harder for Muslims in particular to come out as atheists. That, that, that's true. For those of us who are not part of the Muslim community, it doesn't affect us directly, but uh, there is an indirect effect where uh, religious identity becomes very important, and so not having a religion is seen as something not normal. It, it, it increases uh, atheophobia indirectly, at least. And uh, I mean, al already uh, there's a mentality that everybody's got a religion, and uh, if you don't have one, then you know you should get one. There's a there's a uh, there's a course in the Quebec school system called Ethics and Religious Culture, and it's r obligatory. And the Quebec school system is supposed to be secular, but this this obligatory course is there. And it, well, just the title right off the bat is bad because it associates ethics with religion, as if you can't be an ethical person without religion. But it basically teaches that, you know, all children have a religious identity. And what is yours? And if you don't have one, there's something wrong with you. That's the mentality that's taught. And this is the mentality of multiculturalism. That, uh, that you identify people not as citizens of, of a country with, you know, what we have in common is our citizenship and our belonging to this country and making democratic decisions. No, you're a Muslim and you're a Christian and uh, you're a Jew and you're something else uh, and you're a, you know, an, uh, a member of a particular native uh, religion from uh, First Nations people or... And, and by identifying people with their religion, uh, it's, uh, it divides and uh, it, it weakens the social fabric. It divides people. And uh, it's, uh, those who promote multiculturalism claim, it, claim that it's a solution for racism, but it's not. It's more like a form of uh, light racism itself. Just as a final question, you know, the idea that morality comes from religion, you talked about that at the conference as well. Oh, uh, yes, we, we certainly have to, as atheists and secularists, we have to fight this idea that somehow you need to have a religion to be a moral person. Because, uh, I mean, morality can't come from God because, well, so, for so many reasons, but the, I mean, Plato wrote it down, attributing it to Socrates uh, 2,500 years ago, where, you know, if, if, um, if you do something because God said it, would it be good even if God hadn't commanded it? Or, you know, is, is something good only because God commands it? In that case, uh, for example, if uh, anyway, Jehovah commands Abraham to kill his son, that means killing your son is moral. Uh, this is where theistic morality goes to. That's where it leads, so that's kind of an absurd situation. So uh, we make decisions about morality independent of what the sacred scriptures say. And, and, and as a matter of fact, we judge the scriptures and we say, oh, well, that, you know, killing the Canaanites in the Bible is not a good thing. We, we, morality exists independent of, uh, independent of religious beliefs. And so atheists uh, can be just as moral, in fact, more moral, uh, because uh, because the theistic morality is a corruption of morality, uh, and uh, for example, there are some people who say you can be good without God. This is not the way to say it. You should say, if you're a religious believer, you can be good in spite of that. But it would be easier if you'd stop believing in that nonsense. It would be easier for you to be a good person. You, in other words, you can be good with God but it's better not to have one. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Sheikh Al-Mufti, علمای عربستان سعودی 
اسمش انقدر درازه حوصله ندارم <تصفيق> بگم ایشون گفتن که کسایی که تو قطر هستن دارن روزه میگیرن روزشون باطله به خاطر اینکه دولت عربستان سعودی خوششون نمیاد از دولت قطر این دعوای بین این دوتا روزه مردم رو باطل میکنه این پایان فتواهای دنیا هست نشون میده که سر آخرش پایانش توی بارگاه عربستان سعودی و مذاهب این قدرتمنده دنیا هست پس واقعا پیشنهاد ما آره پیشنهاد ما چیه؟ روزه نگیرین وقت خودتون رو تلف نکنین الاف این آدم نشین <تصفيق> ولی وقتی میگیرین اگر تو قطر زنه این میکنین بدونین ما بهتون اختاریه عربستان سعودی رو دادیم بریم اونجا ت... مذرت خواهی بکنیم بگین چرا این شیخ های عربستان سعودی هست <تصفيق> خوششون نمیاد از نمیاده فتوهای احمقانه 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 روزه نگیرین بهتره بیست دوم تا بیست و چهارم جویه کنفرانس بین المللی در لندن خواهد بود که واقعا یک کنفرانس آزاد اندیشان و آتیستای به خصوص خاور میانه آفریقای شمالی و آسیای جنوبی هن. تمام کسایی که حرفی برای گفتن دارن در, در این رابطه از سراسر دنیا جمع میشن در لندن بین بیست و بیست چهار جولیه که در رابطه با وضعیت آزاداندشی، فکر آزاد و حق داشتن تغییر جامعه برای یه زندگی بهتر در مورد صحبت بکنن و چیزی که مهم اینجا اینه که وقتی که ما در رابط با آزادی عقیده حرف میزنیم آزادی ابراز عقیده حرف میزنیم همیشه تمرکزش روی مذهبه ولی این کنفرانس میخواد تاکید کنه که آزادی در زم برای کسایی هن که میخوان از مذهب روی برگردونن برای کسایی که میخوان از مذهب انتقاد کنن و حتی مسخرش کنن و این هم یک حق پایه‌ایه هر کدوم از این کسایی که اینجا تو این کنفرانس شرکت میکنن جبهه های نبرد و در واقع در عملی دارن سازماندهی میکنن جمع کردن اینا زیر یک سقف مثل یک کنسرت و کنسرت عظیم بین المللیه که تمام متفکران مشهورش میان با هم صحبت بکنن و بحث و بررسی بکنن اهمیت داره که شما هم شرکت کنین پشتیبانی بکنین از این کنفرانس و به ما بپیوندین و یه چیز مهم دیگه اینه که واقعا لازمه که کسایی که آتیستن از به اصطلاح جهان اسلام که تعدادم خیلی زیاده قبلا گفتیم مثل یه سونامی آتیزم واقعا در منطقه به خصوص به خاطر تاثیر منفی اسلام سیاسی و اسلام تو اون منطقه واقعا لازمه که این افراد بیان و خیلی بلند و رسا بگن که ما حق داریم مذهب و نه. ازش روی برگردونیم نقد کنیم مسخره کنیم و این جزو حق و حقوق پایه انسانیه امیدوارم که به ما بپیوندین 22 تا 24 جولای 2017 در لندن و این ما رو به پایان برنامه این هفته ما میاره امیدوارم که برنامه خوبی برای شما تهیه کرده بودیم و به امید دیدار تا هفته آینده از طرف من و آریام بای And I'm Fadi Bospuya. We're hosting a program called Bread and Roses. It's a weekly program that's broadcast in Persian and English in the Middle East and North Africa, primarily Iran as well. 
And it's also shown on YouTube internationally. And we've been doing this since last May. We're coming up to a year's anniversary and yeah. we, we've had quite a lot of fun making these videos. We discuss taboo breaking, free thinking ideas. The Islamic regime of Iran has called us immoral and corrupt. And that's why the, you need to support us. We are and the alternative voice in Middle East and North Africa. Of corruption and immorality. So do support us. Here's a short video from Patreon that explains how you can help us with even just one dollar a week. That's nothing. Support us. Patreon lets fans become patrons of their favorite artists and content creators. It's different than Kickstarter because it's not about one big project that requires lots of funding. It's more for bloggers or YouTubers or web comics, anyone who creates on a regular basis. Here's how it works. When you become a patron, you're agreeing to give an artist a tip of an amount you set every time they release a piece of content, whether it's a new song, a video, or a recipe. You can set a monthly maximum to make sure that you're always within your budget. Choose an amount, enter your payment information, and you're done. Becoming a patron allows you to view and post in the artist's stream. And in exchange for your support, artists offer additional patron packages, which might include monthly Google Hangouts, music production tutorials, pre-sale concert tickets, or anything they can offer as a way to say thanks. Patreon, empowering a new generation of content creators.